Let me, uh, let's go on from there. Uh, after that, what do you look for? Confirmation or? Well, what, yeah, what do you, you, you want a good clean head and neck. I mean, uh, got a good place to set a saddle. Good withers. Good long sloping hip and good legs. If the legs ain't no good, no. Well, they're probably not going to stay sound. You know, straight. What, what straight. do you think about white feet? I don't object to them so much. Uh, I mean, of course, I used to shoot my own horses and can still can if I have to. I had, you can tell by looking at them, I hadn't done it lately. But <laughs> uh, they, I don't object to them as bad as he used to. You know, all them old ranchers would tell oh, you. Oh, I know, but um, what, 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 one white foot. Yeah. Uh, and wound up feeding them to the crows on the last foot or that's something. That's right, that's right, yeah. that's right. I, I, that, that don't bother me so much. And I, I don't care. I'd rather ride a good horse as a pretty horse. Oh, I had too. And there's a difference. Uh, most everybody had, uh, I, had that nose. I'd really I'd rather think. ride a good pretty horse. Yeah, oh, yeah. I had too. I like yeah. that fly. She feel good. You know. Yeah. Uh, I used to tell my wife, and, and life is too short to ride a sorry horse or dance with the ugly woman. <laughs> and she, that's true. She always hated me for that. But I, and I just picking at her, but I, I was that way about it. If a horse sorry, I wasn't going to ride it. You know, if I, if he could be fixed, well, that's fine. And a lot of folks wasn't as picky there on the ranch. I, we had lots of young, at times they had 40 broodmares and 10 or 11 cowboys, and most of them wasn't interested in the bronc. Had lots of young horses running around, and I didn't mind riding them. You know, if you got one that wasn't suiting you, trade him somebody for one that hadn't started and start over. Well, truth be known, uh, it ain't that he minded, he liked it. Well, you know, I, I, <laughs> he liked it. I used to skip supper to get to ride one if I thought he was going to jump around a little. <laughs> but it, it, That's right. you know, you get older and wiser, that goes away. But I, I figured out pretty early on, too, that a uh, horse learned to buck faster than you learn to ride. That's right. And if, a lot of them old kids that could ride one, and I felt like I could ride one, would, would stick one to see if they would buck, and pretty soon they get to where they couldn't ride it. I figured out that wasn't probably the rate you need to go. You need to keep them from that if you can. Work work around it. I like the way Johnny says I try to talk one out of bucking. You know, yeah. especially them that's short enough hard to ride. You know. Uh, I had, you know, I was young and stout and rode a cheater on my saddle and if I rode them far enough to get hold of that, I was usually pretty hard to get rid of. But if they gonna buck me off, they'd do it in two jumps. Mm -hmm. Me too. You know, I mean, that's just the way it always was. If, that old Casey horse one time that he really did buck. Uh, of course, I was faster than Matt Dillon about grabbing the cheater. And we we stopped. We unloaded up there at the road, and it was cold, son of a gun, and three or four of us stopped and unloaded and trotted off out there about 50 yards and stopped and waited. It got light enough to see, and we started off, and Bobby Boston's horse stumped his toe, and he kind of grabbed him, he grabbed himself and put it, and when he did, old Casey just went at it. Now, that horse, if anybody else's horse bucked, he'd had to have him, he couldn't stand it. But I just, I mean, when I heard Bobby's horse stump his toe, I knew what fixing to happen, I come up with that cheater, and we went for a bronc ride. I mean, went for a bronc ride. They, several of them saw it, couldn't believe that you could ride one like that, you know. He jumped, Harley Long and tried to run into him, he jumped, plumb up on the back of Harley's horse. But I and got, it kept on. Yeah. Well, I got him rolled, and then he went on after he, you know, he's all right. But I figured out pretty quick, you need to figure out something better than that, because you can't do that all the time. But he he was a phenomenal horse. I just, I still, I'm still missing, you know. I could get more done by myself. Yeah. But you got to be smarter than the cow, and you got to be smarter than the horse. That's right. If you want to learn to be a cowboy, if you're very competitive, Start picking up your bulls, especially if they're black bulls. Because they'll cheat you every way in the world, around the head of every canyon, around every brush ticket. you got to be looking half a mile ahead to see where you're going. And that's that's what put me to work, picking up them black bulls. Them rascals are ornery. What's the meanest bulls? I think the worst that we had was Salir. 
Yeah, the big old red cow, yeah. big, big bulls here. Yeah. We, and tall uh, kick you out of the saddle. Yeah. <laughs> we had some of them up there at Sandy, and me and Horst McClellan gathered one over there in that roar beneath pasture one time. And the only place we had to load him was we had to pull in the pin and back up in the corner and run him around the pickup. Couldn't get in there horseback, and I had a pistol and rat shot. It was the bull was a muley, but I had a pistol and rat shot. Uh, and I'd get that sucker to chasing me. And run around and trying to get him to take that bait going around the end of the trailer and go in the trailer. The door on, yeah. But I'd have to get up on the back of the pickup and then he'd try to get up there with me. I shot that bull 41 times from me to you, just <laughs> on the end of the nose, keep him off the back of that pickup. And uh, finally got him chasing me and I went plumb around the trailer and I had the gate shut. But when he's right on my heels and when I went around the corner, I pulled that gate in his face and he's going so fast he went up in the trailer and I slammed the gate on him. <laughs> But you know, he wouldn't let her horses in the trailer. And I was riding a horse that was scared of cattle at the time. And he couldn't get her horses in the trailer. He turned around and was butting at them. I got up in there at the ball peen hammer. And when I got through, I pumped my finger at that bull and he was kind of paying attention. <laughs> but we had to go back and get her horses. We couldn't load them in there. And my horse mind just, he said, I ain't going in there with that fool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's a different story. I've, we've been in lots of escapades like that. Well, you need to tell to four of them. Well, I, Donnie Hall, we we got into more. Well, y'all wanted to. Oh, kind yeah. Of, we had, I mean, had lots of ambition. And, and <laughs> Donnie went to church. That's a good term for it, ambition. Donnie went to church every time the door was open. And I wasn't too religious at the time. Why he put up with me, I don't know. But Good Lord, that's what we, I... Uh, in the, Winter, after we got through with the fall works, nearly always missed 40, 50 calves down there in his country, in my country. And we'd go back and catch them after we get them located on the feeding grounds. We'd go back and catch them. And we had a lot of fun, had lots of wrecks. We the neighbor had a bunch of two-year-old heifers got in on him down there one time. We was over there catching them, shackling them. <laughs> I went and took one off rope. Had one shackled and went down there to get her to take her to the trailer. And a shackle, do you mean? Well, we just we had shackles at the time, just front front foot and back foot, where yeah. they could stand up. Yeah. Didn't tie them down because they a lot of them if they get hot and die. But we went down there and shackled her and unshackled her. And he went off to get another one, and I had mine in the trailer and was letting my horse hold her in the front, and I run around there and shut the middle gate so we could keep her in there mm -hmm. and. Uh, while I was in there, that only rascal drove his up there. Well, she just jumped up in the trailer with me. <laughs> well, I jumped up on the middle gate. Of course, I had top on that trailer, wasn't I? But no place to go, was I it? I perched up there like a monkey on a limb, you know. <laughs> Both them heifers was hooking at me. He's just out there laughing. He thought that was great fun. <laughs> but we used to do stuff like that all the time. I mean, we, 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 I, we, that old country down there was bad rough and, and we run over jump canyons, jumped off bluffs, run over trees. Thought it was great fun. Yeah. You know. And it was. Well, it was. But, and it's amazing to me that the way we acted, neither one, he got hurt several times. He got his back broke once, horse bucked him off in the round pen. And got his knee messed up, got his jaw broke, horse pulled him in the jaw, broke his jaw. Uh, and I never was hurt bad. Worst fall I ever took was yearling run off over there at the rose and across the grubbed out flat. And it's, it's, it's a big long story, but he, I was either going to catch him or turn him. Well, he went to turn and horse run across one of them grubbed out spots and turned over. Uh, when he, he went down, coat going over you know. He went down. Yeah, they see him to crest the hill. He went down and, and started up. You collect him up if you had your rifle. Probably. Johnny, pretty handy now. Uh, he started up and when he did, I hit him on top of the head with my face and knocked him on down. But he... he uh, How bad did it mess your face up? Well, I got a scar right there. Cut my face. But he he turned my left foot backwards and then slid across it. Turned my foot plumb around backwards. And uh, Donnie come running up there. We was gathering remnants. What we was doing, and 
and come running up there. Of course, my mouth was bleeding, my yeah, face was bleeding. He said, man, you're going to bleed death. And I said, that's all right. Pull that boot off. I think that leg's broke. And uh, I knew when he pulled it off that it probably wasn't broke, or, but I didn't have no feeling in it anyway. Well, they, Jakey hauled me in to pick up, up here to the doctor, and they sewed my eye up and x-rayed my leg, and there wasn't nothing hurt. And about six months later, the doctor couldn't walk on that ankle. I went to the chiropractor, which he used to go all the time anyway. I said, what's wrong with that ankle? And he messed around with a while, and he said, how long has that been out of joint? I said, I don't know, about six months. Horse fell with me. And, and you put weight in the stirrups all over day. Yeah, well, you know, it, I think it just got out that just a week or two before, but it just stretched the tendons enough that, yeah, that it pop it, out. Kind and it still, once in a while, I have to go get him pop it back in. Not, but I, I'm really pretty healthy for the way of abusing well, myself. Oh, golly, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm 66, and I don't know too many guys my age that wants to work like I do. I don't either. I ain't. But, I mean, I enjoy it. And I'm not going to sit around. I'm going to work till I can't. You know, of course, some, well, one thing about working like I did is you didn't put a lot of money back, so you're going to need to do something for a while. I mean, I'm not hurting, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, but everything I've got is paid for, so I'm not hurting too bad. But I've got two good horses to retire on. Well, are you going, are you going to let them boys keep starting these? for you and then you finishing them? Is that what kind of you got in mind? Well, I, like I said, I got two to retire on. I think I may just quit and they're both gentle. One of them sick and one of them four and surely they'll wear me out. Get to where I can't uh, go. Actually, I've got a yearling filly over there. <laughs> I'm probably, and I had a, a guy give me the stud fee on her and he said, if she, if that mare has a filly and you don't want it, I'll buy her. And I told him, what I'd take here black last spring I come off a wheat field with her. Look looked like a million dollars. And I called him and said, I'll sell you this filly. And he never did come get her and I got to looking at her and I like, crap, I'm just gonna keep her. She'd want to cross the road? Yeah. Red Roan. Yeah. A one time Pepto. I'd like to see her. Her mother, uh I raised her mother and and the other little gray mare that's down there. Sold her mother when she, when she was two year old for 2,500 unbroke. A friend of mine had her and did everything in the world. They rained on her, they roped on her. They, we used her for a pack horse in Colorado. I mean, she's just an exceptional minded mare, you know, pretty. And uh, he sent her to T. Woolman's brother in law to rope on and to start her healing. And this guy rides her 30 days and called him and said, I'll give you $15,000 for this mare. Dang. And he said, oh, he said, I don't, he said, I don't want to sell her. He said, she's gentle, she suits me. He said, I don't want to sell her. I don't need the money. He said, I'm just going to keep her. Well, that mare was seven or eight at the time, and he called me, she was 15, and said, hey. He said, I'm thinking they have neck surgery. My doctor tells me my riding days are done. And he, he said, they're still bugging me about buying this mare. He said, she's 15, her hawks was getting a little stiff. He said, I don't want her abuse. He said, I'll give her to you if you'll come get her. I said, well, I'll be right there. <laughs> That's right. Because there's not many of them Goldfinger's mares left Dang. in the country. Dang. But them two are granddaughters. There's the only ones I know of very close, you know. But uh, I've, this is the first colt she had after I got her back. And then she's got a, I sent her to Shannon. I'm going to leave her over there. How are you? Uh, she's got a Bayron filly on her over there. And I can't get nothing but fillies. She had a Bayron filly on over there that uh, out of a horse Shannon had frozen semen on. A horse called Bee Devil. He was a smart little ricochet, Autumn Boone. I mean, a well bred horse. But I'm probably going to wind up selling that filly to Shannon. I, um, if you're going to ride Myers, you, you probably just need to keep Myers, but I got a Myers to kill him. Yeah. And he aggravates her all the time. Well, tell me this. Do you. Them mares over stud horses or gildings, or what do you think makes it better? Well, I, I I'm not opposed to riding mares. I mean, I've rode some awful good ones. This 
this little mare I got over here now, when you rode up on her, well, she was pretty. And yeah, she, and, yeah, she's fancy. And she was just right there on the end of your fern girl all the time, and people noticed you when you rode up. Yeah, oh yeah. And one time, we was working for Walt Campbell down there, and, and uh, Punch was there, and he's a, they'd always bragging on that little old mare, and I said, did you ever ride her? And he said, no. I said, go out there and get on her. He went out there and got on her, and she like spun out money, and he said, man, you got her steering clutch is greased. <laughs> but she she was just nice. Started good when she was a baby. And she was kind of a jackass when she was early. I mean, she pawed Donnie Hall one time we was trimming her feet. I gave her a good whooping and all that went away. Mad that, you know. <laughs> you know. Mad but, that. But I, I just, you know, so many of the, the ranches for so many years, if they, if they, if they, if they, if they broke a, a filly out or a, or a mare out, it was just to see, see kind of what. See, she's worth, worth breeding. That's right. And I, I agree with that. And, uh, and I think I do too. You after can't. all these years, I, And I don't know. I've heard of people spaying mares and riding them. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know how that works. I've never done it. I've talked about it, uh, but I don't know. Where you got a big bunch of horses together, Gildings is probably better. Yeah, well, I mean, you can run them down the feed trough and feed them, you know, but and they can get their... I will say this about a mare. They're kind of like a stud. They'll do what you let them. Yeah, that's right. That that little old mare, her mother was a hateful witch, fighting sucker, and she was wanted to be that away until that saddle hit her back, and then that went away. But I didn't tolerate that. You know? They, they'll do what you load her in the trailer, with, put her in the front, put a bunch of horse behind her. She'd never make a bobble. But she got schooled on yeah, for it. She yeah, learned better. Yeah, that's right. And that, and that's the same thing it takes with a stud horse. I mean, you know, I, I, I rode them stud horses. You put, just put them, I mean, I, now them gildings of granted just raised up with him. They, you know, that same bunch of, uh, of colts. But I mean, uh, he, he never, I mean, once he's under a saddle, he, a lot of people, they're, just, they're a horse. Yeah, they're like a horse. Yeah, they are. That's right. When when I, Don Howell's brother had the daddy. He was a goldfinger's horse that got snake bit when he was a baby, and he went blind in one eye. And Bobby gave him to Don, and Donnie sold him to his brother in Louisiana. And and the horse was getting old when I got him. Uh, but he'd never been out of a stall. And I turned him out with those mares yeah. and got three colts. Yeah. Uh, and I wished I'd have got more for three mares all I had. And at the time I had a, a black stud I bought from Gene Demet, uh, Dent Bradley over at Demet was getting a lot of good horses from. But that fall, I put them two horses in the pen there at my house across the fence from one another. And I had a little old trap leased up there at Donnie Hall's house in town and I took both them studs up there one of them solid black and the other one's white took both them studs up there and turned them out together people thought I was crazy they got along great you see them out there standing head and tail swatting flies you know they're just a horse that's right you just got to treat them how to work that's right that's exactly right I mean mother nature teach you a lot if you watch a lot of them big ranches up north raise all them old big studs. They they run them together mm -hmm. in the winter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, up Montana and mm -hmm. Wyoming up in there. They, well, they and so many people run 200 mares and whatnot. It, it, you just got to know how to deal with them. That's right. They'll establish their pecking order and get along. They will. They will. But the gilding it that way. I mean, was I kept 25 saddle horses there at Sandy. Three of us rode them, and had some old backbiters around that that uh, would mess up a bunch of horses if you'd let them. But when I walked out there, they knew who was boss, and that all went away. Mm -hmm. But I I kept a BB gun sitting beside my feed room door, and I'd feed them, and one of them start some of that. All all them old light him up. All them old biggins that whooping them others. They got to where they'd eat on the other side of the trawl watching that feed room door. <laughs> they're not, they ain't stupid. They're not stupid. But it, right. it got real quiet around the feed trough. That's right. 
Yeah. Well, you get a whole hurt, you know, for no reason. Well, just get diving you, at one get another. You get you, yeah, they do. Yeah, they I had, will. I had, I had two buckets of oats, and I mean, you can't I had it. one of them run a three-year-old. He spun around, hit me in the face with his head. Mm -hmm. And I about knocked me out. Trying to get away from Trying to get away from that mm -hmm. other, you know. And that's when I decided I need, they need to stay out of my space while that's I'm right. putting out feed. That's right. That's right. But, you know, there's, there's a bubble there. There is. For a horse and one for you. That's exactly right. You know, and the horse that's will tell right. you when you're in his bubble. That's right. Most of them. That's right. But I, I learned, I take care of me. That's right. Well, you got to. I mean, it's especially around. Way, it's the only way you can survive. I, I'm amazed at it. A lot of the people that cowboy that no more attention that they pay to what's actually happening.